Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Cami Page Boutique. I'm Brooke Tannehill and today I'm going to show you how I made this foil decal and fabric wrapped tumbler. As always, all the products I use will be listed in the description below and you may even find a coupon code or two that saves you some coin. Also, come join our exclusive Facebook group where you could take advantage of upcoming freebies and giveaways that you aren't going to want to miss. So without further hesitation, let's go ahead and get started. For this design, I started with a 30 ounce straight note taper from AB Designs Co, prepped it, spray painted it with almond semi-gloss from Rust-Oleum, let that dry for about two hours, and now I'm coming in and applying Artistry's glitter glue over the entire surface of the cup. Now, I like Artistry's glitter glue because it gives me a lot longer working time than Mod Podge, but it doesn't have the dry time that epoxy does. So I'm gonna come through and apply a nice healthy coat, but not so much that it's dripping off the cup, but just enough to act as a nice adhesive. So I'm gonna take my time using a cheapo makeup brush to get a nice even coat over the entire surface of the tumbler. Now I had previously trimmed down the fabric before I started this, but I'm just going to lay down the cup and I'm just going to rock it back and forth to really start the fabric to apply to my tumbler. And I'm going to push down and smooth out at the same time. So I'm pushing down as I'm rolling the tumbler and I'm also moving my hands outwards from the center to really try and prevent any air bubbles from popping up or appearing underneath the fabric. So literally while you're pushing down, you're also smoothing out. So it's kind of a dual motion that you're doing. And I'm just going to kind of work it back and forth several times, even pull it tightly at the seam to really make sure that I have the cup nice and adhered well to the fabric. Before I'm done, I'm just going to spray just a little bit more of the glitter glue at the seam just to make sure that I've got good adhesion between the two ends of the fabric. So I'm just going to apply some right in there and then use my epoxy stir stick to kind of spread it out and push down on that seam even further. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to grab my scissors and just like trim, not necessarily get as close to the edge as possible, but just trim the excess off the fabric and push down that seam after I cut. So you can tell I'm just kind of roughly cutting it just so that there's not a bunch of excess, possibly pulling the two ends apart, push it down and then let it sit for about four hours. Then due to the magic of cinematography, we are ready to start applying our coats of glitter glue. So I am just going to apply the glitter glue over the top of the fabric and just use a makeup brush. Um, I was just dabbing off some of the excess water from the makeup brush right there. And we're just going to apply again, a nice healthy coat over the entire surface of the tumbler. Now we're going to do this three separate times. And the reason why we do this is we really wanna make sure that the fabric is nice and sealed before we go into our coats of epoxy. If we don't seal it, there is the chance that the, epo the epoxy can really sink into the fabric unevenly and you can get what's called almost like grease spots. So take the time, apply your glitter glue, wait up between like two to four hours, then come in, apply another coat and just repeat until you've got three really healthy coats of the glitter glue applied to the tumbler. Now, we are not going to cut off the excess at the bottom rim or the top rim until the cup is completely dried. After the cup is dry, we're gonna come in with our X-Acto knife, and I did trim the top rim with scissors before I did this, but we're gonna come in with our X-Acto knife at a 45 degree angle and just cut off any excess that might be on that top rim. So you can just see, just kind of go around. And if you have the three coats on there, it should be nice and like, it's just stiff enough to really have the knife cut it easily. So you can just make your way around the top rim of the tumbler, and then it's time to move on to the butt. For the bottom rim, I'm using the vinyl cutter from Cami Page Boutique. I'm just going to turn it a couple of times and remove the excess. But one of the things I did not capture is that I actually trimmed the seam that you can see there with my X-Acto knife after the fabric was dry. And then I came in with one other coat of Artistry's glitter glue and sealed the seam and the top and bottom rim. And then I went in with two coats of Artistry's one-to-one -one facet, about 20 milliliters the first time, 15 milliliters the second time, let those fully dry. And then it's time to move on to the bottom rim. Here I'm just using regular just blue painters tape and I'm following the guide from where we cut our fabric. And then I'm going to mix together purple paint, white paint, and a little bit of Artistry's glitter glue just to make the kind of mixture for how we're going to apply the glitter. 
a lot of times when you're just using small sections, this is by far the easiest way to apply your glitter. And I just get amazing coverage. So I'm just going to mix the three parts together and then just paint them onto the bottom of my tumbler. Now I'm not, like I don't stick, I don't try to not get the paint on the tape, but I'm just gonna come through and add a nice healthy coat over the entire bottom because you wanna make sure that you have something really great there to adhere the glitter with. And then I'm going to come in with Aura in the 0.15 cut from Glitter Dip Sips and apply it over the entire surface of the butt where we just painted. So make sure that you got nice, great coverage. And then I am going to immediately pull the tape. Now I'm gonna share one of my favorite hacks with you because sometimes when you pull the tape, you can see some of the paint exposed or the glue that you applied your glitter with. So I actually come in and I hold the cup at a downward angle and I just come in and sprinkle a little bit extra glitter to cover up any of that paint or glue and it works like a charm every time. I let that dry for about four hours, then I spray sealed it twice with Rust-Oleum clear gloss spray paint and then I mixed up about 20 milliliters of epoxy and I'm applying it to the entire surface or the top part of the tumbler before I move on to the butt. Now the reason why I do this is because even though I've sealed it twice, glitter still has a mind of its own. So I'm just going to apply the epoxy at the top first and then I'm going to just apply some more and then start into that bottom section just to prevent as much contamination as possible. Granted, we know that is not ever perfectly possible, but I'm just going to smooth it out over the entire surface of the tumbler, come in with my torch to kind of level it out and pop any bubbles. And then we're going to start to apply the Aura chunky cut to the seam of where the two pieces of the fabric, or the two ends, I guess I should say, of the fabric meet. Now this next part isn't super scientific at all. I'm just going to kind of grab some pinches of glitter, really focus at that seam at first, so, or on the seam at first, and just kind of really lay my glitter down in that section. Now this is going to act as the backdrop for the foil decal that we're going to be applying to the tumbler. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm getting enough of that concentrated glitter for the background of the decal, knowing that it's probably gonna be about two inches tall. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm going to start to fade or almost ombre the glitter into the fabric. So just kind of starting very heavy and then more light, like kind of sparing cover that you see right there. I also like this glitter so much that after I like kind of feathered it out, so to say, on the edges, I did sprinkle a little around this whole surface of the tumbler just to add a little bit extra sparkle and I thought it was beautiful. I let this dry for about two hours, then I spray sealed it and went into two coats of about 20 milliliters each of Artistry's one-to-one -one fast set and let that dry. After it was dry, it was time to do the important steps of sanding the top rim. This is a 120 grip flat wheel from Dremel and I am using it on my Dremel. And what I do is I just slowly go around the top surface of the tumbler, exposing that little bit of stainless steel so that our final coats of epoxy could really have something to attach to to prevent water or liquid from getting in behind the design. So I just come in, kind of just use my flat wheel to expose a little bit of stainless steel. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to come in with my sanding block and kind of smooth out any of the hard edges that might have been created from the flap wheel. So that way, if somebody decides to drink out of the cup without using a lid or a straw, they don't cut their lip or get any pokey bits that are uncomfortable. Once that's done, I grab my orbital hand sander and I'm just going to come in and give the surface of a tumbler a nice sanding. So the reason why I use my orbital is because it's got a rigid surface. So that way it's not digging out the low parts and only hitting the high parts at the same time of the tumbler. Cause a lot of times when you're using um, glitter, like especially a chunky glitter, you get a lot of bumpy areas and maybe some like peaks, so to say. So I just use my orbital and I just rock the tumbler in the opposite way that I'm rocking the orbital. So I'm gonna start at the top, then I'm going to flip it over and I'm constantly moving the tumbler because you do not wanna get flat surfaces as you're sanding. So just take your time and you'll see that the tumbler gets a nice scuffed up surface. I promise it will get beautiful after you're done. But this allows my cups to come out nice and smooth and you get a perfect glass finish when you get to your final steps of this cup. Finally, I'm going to grab my 80 grit sanding block 
and just focus on the bottom rim to knock down any pokey bits. Just kind of taking my time to get that nice, perfect finish. And then I'm going to wash the entire cup with Dawn just soap and water, letting it air dry while I cut and prepare the decals for this beauty. Here I cut my decal on shape tape, and this is just a double-sided sticky sheet using the fabric setting on my Cricut. Then I'm just going to weed it and take off the backing, the first paper backing that you see. So the sticky side of the double-sided tape is up. Then I'm going to use the vertical guide from the Ultimate Decal Guide on Cami Page Boutique, and I'm gonna line it up with the two tops of the X's. Then I'm going to put my cup into place and line up the decal with the glitter section that I want. Using the Ultimate decal guide I know that it's going on perfectly straight I don't have to worry about it being wonky but once it's applied I'm going to work from the center of the decal out to make sure that the double-sided tape is applied now you'll see here that I'm using the perfect transfer tape this is from vinyl fun from everyone I love this transfer tape I will link it down in the description below but it's got the right tact amount to leave the paper on the double-sided sheet there without lifting it so that I can apply my foil when I'm ready now, all the foil I will be using is from Artistic Painting Studio, and look at how beautiful this color is. It's just got such vivid, just bright, cheerful vibes. I just absolutely love it. And I am just going to apply it over the entire surface of this tumbler, like you see here. So I'm just going to push it down over the sticky tape, and then I am using my squeegee to just make sure that it's nice and pushed down on that double-sided tape. Then what you'll do is you'll just kind of pick it up and you'll see where the foil is adhered. Sometimes you just kind of have to come back and um, burnish the foil down a little bit more. It was super cold out and I actually learned that foil does not like the cold. So it just was fighting me a little bit, but if you keep your um, craft room at a warmer temperature, you will not have the issues that you see here. But it is always good practice just to really burnish your foil. So that way you get seamless coverage. Now, one of the things I love about these solid colors is that you can see I missed the edge right there, but you can go back and forth so many times and it just lays down nicely and you'll never see the difference. So don't be afraid to come back in and lay it down and look at how wonderful that looks. Now, here, do not do what I'm doing. Don't do it. It's not cute, it doesn't work, or if you wanna go into a coat of epoxy, that's fine. But do not use transfer tape to apply the second layer. I would just use your X-Acto knife and um, remove that backing and then apply them each one by one. But you'll see here what happens is, is that the transfer tape pulls up the foil. You can kind of see it right there. Now, granted, it's not that big of a deal because I used a solid color, so I just had to come back in and re-burnish the foil over the sections that lifted. But I highly, highly recommend just peeling off the XOXOs like one at a time and then applying them over the um, kind of the offset that we already applied. So here I'm just coming back in and actually I found that the back of my tweezers worked perfectly for burnishing these little sections. So I'm just kind of coming in and rubbing the foil back over the sections that lifted and just do not do what I did. Learn from my mistakes. I promise, I promise you'll be thankful in the end. Once I got that little snafu taken care of, I just came in and I lifted the paper from the second layer of the double-sided tape that we laid down. Again, this is shape tape. And I just picked up the paper and then we're going to come in with another beautiful light purple um, foil, again from Artistic Painting Studio. I love this color. I wish I could use it on anything. I'm becoming more and more of a purple person. I know, I know, but it's real. I'm really loving it. But I just came in and just kind of applied it over the tape. I am not good at sizing things, if you can't tell. I cut this way too short, but again, because we are using a single color, it was not a big deal. I just came up and I just pulled this and then just reapplied it in that last section right there just to make sure that I got great coverage. But I'm just coming in and just applying this over the second coat of the double-sided sticky tape, and it's just giving me this great layered look for the decal that you see here. I will also link this SVG down in the description. Um, it was a fun one that I created for this Tumblr specifically, so you'll be able to find it at cambypageboutique.com. Shameless plug, I know, but I had to. So I'm just going to keep on working with the foil until I'm happy with it, coming down to that section of the O that was not covered that first time around. But you can see how easy it is to reapply the foil to the sections that may or may not have been covered. 
or maybe didn't cover the way you wanted to the first time and you'll get this nice seamless glass like finish it almost looks like a mirror if you can't see that there once I was happy with the coverage, I spray sealed this once with a Solium Clear Glass Spray Paint, and then I finished it off with two coats of Artistry's One to One Facet, and this baby was done. I hope this tutorial inspires you, and I can't wait to see what you create. If you have any questions about any of the steps or information, please feel free to reach out, and I'll be more than happy to help. As always, thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me. If you like this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see future videos. You can also ring the bell so you're notified of all future cup making goodies. Thank you again. I love you guys. Bye.